to All Odd Games. My name is Max, and today we'll be taking a look at five top tips to get the most out of your Blood Red Skies Midway set. So the first thing we're going to be taking a look at is how robust the Wildcats are. Compared to their counterparts, the Zeros, they can stick in the fight for a lot longer. They're a little bit less maneuverable and a little bit less fast, but in game terms, sometimes just staying in the fight and not catching fire and falling out of the sky is a big factor. So the robust trait card will mean every time you take a hit, they'll be taking a little bit less damage and you'll be taking a couple less boom chits, keeping you in the game for longer to get those zeros in a position to bring them down. Number two, agile zeros. So the zeros naturally have a high agility score. This means that when they are shot at, they're more likely to be able to roll out of damage. This means that even though their arm is a bit less than the uh, wildcats, they can stay in the fight their own way. Additionally, they've got a stat card called No Stalling, which means they can move under their minimum half speed, which means that once you have an opportunity to shoot down the Wildcat, it'll have a harder time getting away because you can stay on the tail for longer. Painting the Wildcat. So obviously, once you've got your new box, the first thing you're going to want to do is probably have a look at the models. After that, you should probably get them painted. So the first thing you're going to want to do is uh, spray them a colour of your choice. I usually go for a white or a grey base coat, and after that, you're going to get your base coat on. For this, I recommend Luftwaffe Uniform World War II. Might seem a bit different for the World War II US planes, but trust me, it's the right kind of tone. So get your base coat of that on. You want to shade it back at that point with something like Army Painter's Dark Tone. That will highlight the panels and really bring those details to life. And then finally, if you're feeling adventurous, a uh, highlight of sombre grey on the edges, and maybe even a dry brush if you're a bit less, if you're newer to the hobby. Um, the only other thing I'd suggest is if you get the canopies and hit them with a wash of gloss varnish, those will really shine and actually look like glass. Number four, painting the zeros. So the zeros are actually quite easy to get on the tabletop, being mostly white on the fuselage. So what I'd recommend is starting off with a white spray from something like Army Painter or Humbrol, hit it all over with that, and then give it a wash from either Strong Tone or Dark Tone from the Army Painter range. After that, you'll want to wait for it to dry, hit it with a highlight or a dry brush of extra white paints, and apply your decals. That'll get it looking great on the tabletop. You could also, if you want a more worn look, start with a beige undercoat using something like Dark Sand or Pale Sand from Vallejo. Number five, aces. So once you've got your basic Battle for Midway set painted up and you've had your first few games under your belt, the next thing you're going to want to do is add a couple of aces. So every nation has a bunch to choose from and I recommend the best ones for the Battle of Midway starter set is Joe Foss for the Americans and Saburo Sakai for the Japanese. So these add a whole extra dimension to your game. Not only are they a level five pilot because they're aces, which are very dangerous on the battlefield, you're also going to get extra trait cards. So each one of these will add a whole new dimension to your game. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to see more, please remember to like, comment and subscribe. Pre-order your Battle of Midway set today.